Hi everyone and welcome back to a writing guide. The things you pick up along the journey of a hobby can be endless. Mechanics if you're into cars or motorcycles, photography if you're into traveling, and calligraphy if you're into fountain pens like many of us here. However, there are things I wish I had known prior to going into the fountain pen hobby for one reason or another. And in today's video, I'll be sharing a thing or two you might find useful in your pen collecting journey. And if you have other ideas, please do share your stories in the comments below as well. If you would like to support the channel, please click the like button and subscribe. For your next found pen purchases, please check out writingguide.shop on Instagram as well as the Patreon. Links will be in the description for downloadables and PDFs. Thank you. The first thing is nobody cares about your fountain pens. Even though there are plenty of us around the internet, when combined, the number of fountain pen users are so few and far in between compared to other hobbies, leading to the very straightforward fact that nobody really cares. Of course, the occasional nice Mont Blanc might pop up here and there, but on a daily basis, People are too occupied with their own problems to even notice you with your fancy pens. With that in mind, I think it is safe to say that you could try buying pens for your own enjoyment instead of buying to impress others. That's also one of the reasons why I stopped buying pens since 2019, and I'm perfectly happy with that. Though I wish I had known the fact way before to not impulsively buy limited editions, but that's a story for a later day. Pen skills can save you a lot of money. Unlike ballpoint pens that are made completely mechanically, there is always going to be that last touch of man to finish off a fountain pen. Whether it is the last retouch of the nib or that final buffing. It does bring the human touch to the table, but because of that, fountain pens can come with a bit of loss. I've come to terms that even the pens at the highest price tag could also come with a bit of a misaligned nib or a crooked bit here and there, and I had learned to be comfortably adjusting them to the closest of my preference, and after many years, the skills can also be a lifesavers as well. A nib drop might seem unfixable, but with a bit of tweaking and tuning, it could come back to life once again. Instead of me going out of my way to send it to a nibmeister, there are plenty of guides on the interweb on how to tinker with your pens, and please do try them out on less expensive pens first until you're comfortable with doing things by yourself. Vintage pens are not for everyone. To follow up with the previous point, because not everyone has the spare time and investment into learning a new set of skills on fixing old broken fountain pens, also means that vintage pieces are not going to be for everyone. Please be aware that if you are going into vintage pens blindly, you can be in for a world of hurt later on when the pen decides to break down on you and there is a crime scene in ink around your workstation. There are sources for spare parts, however, it is quite the trouble to find the correct to find the correct components for your specific pens models and there are even fewer vendors of those at times goes on you would have to accept the fact that eventually your lever filler fountain pen would turn into a fancified dip pen in the later future it is inevitable that they would break down and knowing that before you dive into the world of vintages can be a relief. If you are not comfortable with that, then I think vintage pens are not for you. Fountain pens can be expensive. As the fountain pen folks always throw these ideas around, fountain pens are more economically efficient than using ballpoints, or the usual, it helps saves the earth as you don't throw out as much plastic and waste. This is true to some extent, only if you stick to one pen and one ink bottle until it runs out, 
or the pen breaks apart and that's a really long time the matter of fact is that there are so many releases and beautiful pen colors that catches your attention and before long you would find yourself surrounded by a mountain of boxes unused inks sitting on your shelves if you want to be really frugal with your pen purchases adopting a minimalistic approach to buying and even considering pre-owned pens can really help with your budget there are plenty of options available and it doesn't have to be costly to scour ebay or pen shows for a decent pen at good prices ink can also become expensive really quick if you decide to grab every single ink colors if and when they come out and it takes a really long time to actually use up a whole bottle of ink roughly a year or two if you refill your pen every single week it does not mean that you should only buy one pen and one ink alone and stick to that until the day you die but the key here is to do your purchases consciously and effectively trying out more pens at pen meets or pen shows before you decide to splurge is one of the best way to curb that buying itch and it works if you know how a pen performs in your hand and the way you prefer your writing instruments there would be a point where you do not have to have the urge to buy more and actually stick to playing with the current pens in your collection i'm glad to be at that point right now and i'm still glad i went through the excessive buying phase however i do regret those impulsive purchases and that makes for good stories to tell you guys letting pens go can be okay chasing after that one grail pen is fun and all but there would come a time when too much is too much life does come in our ways sometimes and it is totally okay to let your favorite pens go parting ways with a beloved found pen whether through selling or giving it away can be a liberating experience these writing instruments often carry personal memories stories and a sense of connection however acknowledging that it's okay to let them go signifies a willingness to share the joy they brought into one's life by selling the pen might find a new home where it continues to inspire creativity alternatively giving it away can be a gesture of goodwill passing on the pleasure of writing to someone else in embracing the act of parting with a cherished possession one opens the door for new experiences and opportunities allowing the pen's legacy to extend beyond its initial owner found pens are not a type of asset this might come as a shocker to many collectors but your pens are not a type of asset there are specific models that do appreciate over time but that's one in a blue moon to supply and demand most of the time. your pen purchases do not have that certainty of increasing its val value in many years to come so don't expect to sell your pens later on in the future and make double or triple the original price i would say lucky that you could manage to get half of your money back please be conscious of your buying decisions and knowing that most found pens do not appreciate over time can be a good relief to know that you can freely buy your next pen and confidently filling it up to use as intended for your own writing enjoyment brand name isn't everything the logo the name of the brand creates a lot of personalities of the pens you enjoy the italians with their extravagant naming and colorful design or the germans with timeless classics resonates with each of us differently however the brand is just a name and it co could only bring so much to the table you can always find alternatives to a pen design that you might like and sometimes you can even find out an obscure brand that did it better than the pens you thought were your grail we cannot deny that there is value retention with some significant brands but at the end of the day a film pen is to be used and put to work so its value can already be exerted through your creative process and your thinking expression the logo that stuck to the pen could only do so much to add an extra point of confidence to the owner it's cool and all but that's about it
Maintenance is key. As I mentioned many times before, a pen is a tool. Your average car needs an oil change and a glance from the mechanic. Every 10,000 miles, your watch needs an oiling every five years or so, and so does your fountain pen. A wash every month doesn't seem like much, but it does wonders in terms of letting you know that the pen is in tip-top shape. If you are a mechanical nerd, you could even attempt at disassembling a pen to lubricate the pistons and gaskets and put everything back together. This is also extremely important to vintage pens as they use easily deteriorating components such as ink sacs and metal rods. So knowing a thing or two about replacing them every month makes your life a lot easier if you're into vintage pieces. Value is relative. The price of a pen could only tickle you so much to the point of purchase if it is that much worth it to you. I always advise my customer to think really carefully on how much they actually want to spend on a pen, hinging on the perspective of the buyer and their willingness to invest. What may be priceless and grail by one person might be of little value to another. The true worth of a fountain pen is often intricately tied to the event that led to its acquisition, a gift from a significant loved ones, or a present to yourself after achieving a milestone perhaps could make an inexpensive fountain pen into something priceless and couldn't be put into numerical value. In a marketplace, the value of a fountain pen are usually dictated by the brand, and in most cases, the prices do not subjectively reflect how much it is worth to the general public. Limited collections might come with a hefty price tag at launch, but may sit inside a store window for years to come, as not many collectors deemed it as valuable as it poses to be. At the end of the day, a pen is what you make of it, and please think twice before pressing that buy now button. And finally, it's the friends you make along the way. The amount of knowledge you can gain from studying a hobby by yourself could only amount to so much, and I would have to be honest that I'm not the smartest person in the room to talk about pens. That's also the reason why the occasional pen meets can be the chance for you to learn so much more from other fountain pen users. I would never have experienced Aurora or Monte Grappa or even some of the pens you see reviewed here on the channel without those pen meets. And also the relationship that formed along the way can also grow into something really awesome later on when you look back at it. You can make friends around the world with the fountain pen folks and it is really a peculiar thing to think about. Just because of these little pens and inks and paper, the world created a large community of people sharing the same passion. That's my thoughts. And that are the things I wish I would have known before going back into the world of fountain pens. And what about you guys? Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.